Hello and thanks for joining us. My name is Matt Gullicke. I am from Chesapeake Marketing and Midlantic Marketing. Today we're going to go over ease of operation, uh, which most people want in a video management system. In this case, for an operator client. So we're going to cover uh, ease of function, uh, the intuitive components of a VMS operator client. We're going to show live and playback operation all in one interface. These are key things that people want in a simple, easy to use VMS. For today's example, we're going to use the Bosch Video Management System Operator Client, also known as BVMS. What we have on the screen is the opening user interface window. Uh, just to get a lay of the land, uh, in the upper left we have a uh, pair of icons. One is a picture of a camera and one is a picture of a film strip indicative of live view and the film script is indicative of playback so I can toggle between these and um, easily review recorded video or see live images. In the main window we have what we call viewing panes or viewing windows. Uh, this is where we're going to drag and drop or click to see video uh, from the various cameras in the system. We can also place instructional messages in here through HTML um, or also maps and graphics so we can easily look at uh, a facility rather than having to remember uh, camera names. To the left you'll see uh, what we call our camera tree and we can have folders of cameras or camera names listed. Below there you have a pan tilt zoom interface for cameras that are uh, moving like uh, the Bosch Autodome or the Bosch Mix series. Um, we can have operator control those from here or the operator can control it from within one of the viewing windows. At the bottom of the screen you'll see where alarm and messages come up. Uh, this is where the operator can acknowledge a message, acknowledge an alarm, uh, while acknowledging alarm input text to indicate what actions were taken when the alarm comes in. We can see when um, other operators tried to log into the system, uh, any system errors, video loss, anything along those lines that an operator would need to know right away. So to get started with a simple operator use, um, a lot of operators like to look at a simple uh, you know, tree of or list of cameras. And so what I can do is I can drag and drop cameras from this list directly into the viewing window. So it's pretty simple. I just drag a camera over. I click and hold it, drag it over, and you end up with cameras populating your screen. Now, as you're doing this, you may have quite a few viewing windows open. Something may catch your eye, let's say, in this case, in the upper left-hand window. Rather than having to change screens to see a bigger picture, I have a couple options. I can double click this and get a full, sc full screen image, or I can drag and drag a corner and get a bigger image that way. Double click, full screen, double click. I can gra grab the corner and change it again. So very intuitive, very easy to use for an operator. I also have pan, tilt, zoom control as I mentioned. I can drag my pan, tilt, zoom camera in. Double click the image. And now with my mouse on the screen, I can move the camera left. Move my camera right. Zoom in. zoom out. I could also utilize the pan tilt zoom controls on the left below the camera tree as discussed earlier. Move right, move left, so on and so forth. I also have control of pre-positions, allowing the camera to go to an automatic predetermined position for ease of operation. So if maybe I have a gate or something along those lines, instead of moving the camera left and right, I can just select that pre-position, move the camera to that position. Back to a multi-screen view. 
I can also bring maps into this view. So in this example, I'm going to bring an airport map in. What this allows us to do is, in an easier, for some people, easier to understand way, rather than looking at a, a camera tree where I have to know camera names on the left, I can use a map. So if, if there was an emergency in a terminal or out on the street, I can easily orient where I'm trying to find on my facility and drag and drop cameras from the map over to a viewing window. The other thing that I can do to make it easier for a user to use the system, uh, rather than picking individual cameras, whether from a map or from a, a, a camera tree, is to use what's called favorites. So on the left hand side I have a, a quick link button called a favorite view. When I click on that, I have a list of favorites that I've pre-selected. Let's say, for example, I wanted to investigate the front entrance and watch what kind of uh, vehicles were coming into my parking lot. I could double click on license plate and I get a predetermined view that I chose based on my operator credentials. And I get a uh, user interface for uh, vehicle uh, license plate capture software and uh, automatically populated at the bottom are a variety of license plate cameras and an overview. So if I decided at this point that there was something interesting that I wanted to investigate, I could go to the upper left hand corner and rather than being in live view, I can select the playback button. And you can see it looks identical to the screen that I was looking at that was live. From here, I can now investigate something that may have happened. So to get a lay of the land, at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have speed control to the left. So I can go up to 1 8 speed for slow playback, or 8 times speed, in this case, for, for high speed playback. To the right of that, I have my DVR standard looking buttons for forward, backward, pause. I have a uh, time and date representation. To the far right, I have my export button. At the very bottom of the screen, I have a list of cameras that I'm looking at on the screen. And then to the right of those, I have a timeline. In this timeline, I can have a variety of different indicators of activity. I can have a solid bar of a certain color for continuous recording. I could have different colors that indicate motion-based recording, and perhaps I'd have red even for alarm-based recording. This makes it very easy to investigate on one or more cameras things that may have happened uh, throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout the week. Once I've found the video that I want, I can click a simple export button and a video export window appears. In this window, we get to pick a variety of um, options uh, from naming my clip, selecting a very specific date range, choosing whether I want to export the video with native format to include the player, or do I want to use a Windows Media Player compatible version. The difference being the native format would be admissible in a court of law, whereas the Windows Media Player format while not admissible in court, may be much easier for me to share with colleagues and, and fellow investigators prior to exporting and archiving the native format. I also have a choice of where I want to store the video. Do I want to store it to my local C drive? Do I want to store it to a network drive? Perhaps I want to put it on a DVD to be put into a folder or maybe a USB drive. You have all those options selectable here. At the very bottom of this window, you also have a freeform text window where we can enter information about that clip for reference in the future. I click the export button after I've made all my selections. The system goes through a simple process that's automated and creates my archive video uh, where I want it and in the format that I want it. Hopefully this information has been helpful to you. You can always reach us at www.midchess.com.
www.midchess.com. That's www.midchess.com. Thank you and have a great day.